you guys doing? Micah Cannon, your host. Per usual, there are a lot of things going on in the sports world. One thing I want to talk about are the New York Knicks acquiring Miguel Bridges, or Mikel Bridges, in a blockbuster trade. Now, the Knicks have started this offseason bold, very bold. They acquired Mikel Bridges for a haul of draft picks. They gave the Nets four unprotected picks, 2027, 2029, 2031, and I think the other one was in like 2028, 2027 as well. Uh, they gave them a protected first round pick on top of that, a 2028 pick swap, and a 2025 second round pick. All of that for Mikel Bridges in a second. Guys, that is a lot. Now, the Knicks have decided that essentially they're going to compete right now. They're saying, hey, this is our team. This is what we want. They have Bridges, Hart. Brunson, DiVincenzo, Randall, and they still need to sign OG Ananobi, which seems like they want to. So I believe it's going to end up being good for the Knicks. Now, do I think the Knicks are now the team to beat in the Eastern Conference? Huh. No, they're not. They are not. Not yet. But I do think their defense is going to be outstanding, and I think their offense is going to be really, really good. They have everything it takes to compete at a high level. Now, as the Knicks, you're basically saying for the next three to five years, this is your team. You have no picks, very little assets. The Knicks took a major risk. In my opinion, they were a little fleeced. I thought they were rather fleeced. That's what I thought. I think the New York Knicks got secretly robbed, or there's a chance that they got secretly robbed on their home turf. I said yesterday on TikTok, we need to report a robbery in Manhattan at the Madison Square Garden because the Knicks were just robbed. They took a major risk, but it could not. It could work out. You never know. Greatness has never come without risk. I hope it works out for the Knicks, but as far as the Nets are, they are golden. The Nets are completely fantastic right now. This was a great trade for them. They have a ton of draft stock and even traded with Houston a couple minutes later to get their real 2026 pick back that they gave away in the James Harden trade, which is absolute genius. Now you're guaranteeing that your pick is going to be good. You don't have to rely on another team to be bad. You're guaranteeing that this pick is going to be good. Now you can properly rebuild. Now you can honestly rebuild your team. See, what this shows me is that the Nets... They learned from the mistake they made 10 years ago with the Boston Celtics. They took KG, um, Paul Pierce, and uh, it was Jason Terry. Took those three guys, gave away all of their picks, and ended up being terrible because those picks were the catalyst for Boston winning a championship this year. So they definitely learned from that. I really, really love the fact that they have their picks back. They have their stock. Now, as a Nets franchise, you can effectively tank. You can effectively tank. You can be bad. You can get good picks. You need to have direction as a team in the NBA. The worst team or the worst type of team to be in the NBA is a team with zero direction. Zero. Hi, my Atlanta Hawks right now. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, you either have to be bad, tanking, or you either have to be good, competing for a title. Anything in between is bad anything if you're 42 and 40 every single season you're not good enough to compete but you're not bad enough to rebuild i don't like that i'm glad that the nets now have some direction i'm glad that the knicks have some direction granted there are two totally different directions the knicks are saying we're competing for a title we are are we are guaranteeing we want to guarantee this team being at the top of the Eastern standings and uh, competing at the top of the East for the next couple years. And the Nets, they're saying, we are going to honestly rebuild. This whole Kevin Durant thing with Kyrie and Harden didn't work out. This whole Mikel Bridges superstar thing didn't work out. We're going to rebuild. Great approach from both teams. I think both teams ultimately won the trade, but this could end up being a fleece, a fleece for the Nets. Absolute fleece. Now, the 2024 draft. It's today, and I need to talk about my wonderful Atlanta Hawks. As an Atlanta fan, I don't know whether I should be nervous or excited. Now, people are going to ask me what I think. And, and simply, if you're going to keep Trey Young, if you're going to keep your team the same, just draft Alex Starr, bro. Don't overthink it. Alex Starr is 6'11". He's a shot blocker and has great potential on both sides of the ball. Great potential. 
I really like that. I think you just go with that. Go with the guy who could be a really, really good big in the NBA. The only problem is that this draft is, it's McDonald's-like. <laughs> it's McDonald's-like, right? There's a lot on the menu, and it seems hard to go wrong, but in reality, it feels like all you can do is go wrong. It feels like that at any second, you could land a bad bite and be on the toilet for two weeks. Like, that's pretty much how this draft feels. It feels like taking a trip to McDonald's, right? There's a lot of enticing things on the menu. There's a lot of good stuff on the menu. But the odds of you getting a bad bite and you suffering for it seem high. That's how I see this draft. This draft is a walking McDonald's. That's what I see. Good things on the menu, right? And, and the thing is that the good stuff is gone early. The good stuff is actually early draft, just like at McDonald's. The good stuff is in the morning. Everything else is decent, but the real good stuff is in the morning. That's what this draft is. The good stuff is early, very top-heavy, and even then, there's not a crazy plethora of talent at the top of the draft, but, you know, very top-heavy. This draft is a walking McDonald's in every way possible. Now, I would not be mad if Atlanta drafted that Zachary guy from France. I haven't watched a lot of him. Uh, I haven't really heard of him ever since two weeks ago when he was projected to be the number one overall pick, so i got to do a little bit more research on him. I'll definitely do a reaction on the draft, though. Um... As far as trading the pick, I feel good about that. Pack the pick up, uh, probably trade Murray or Trey. You get a nice little haul for that, in my opinion. Uh, and also, the Hawks are possibly looking to trade Trey Young. Guys, heed my words. Do not be surprised if Rob Dillingham flies off the board at number one overall. Do not be surprised. Do not be surprised. The Atlanta Hawks have said that they wanted to move Trey Young. Trey Young has has uh, been interested in a lot of different teams, the Lakers, the Spurs, for example. All I'm saying is that Rob Dillingham flying off the board at one would not be ridiculous. I would not be surprised if that happened. I would not. That would essentially be Atlanta saying, okay, we're going to rebuild, and Dillingham's going to be a core piece of this rebuild. We believe he's the best player in the draft. Yeah. Rob Dillingham, to me, to me, is one of the better players in the draft. That's just to me. He's fantastic. May, may be a smaller guard. He's got a lot of good smaller guards, but he's a smaller guard. May not be the greatest defender, but he's incredibly quick. He can shoot from everywhere. The dude shot 40% from three last year and 47% in total. He was absolutely magnificent at Kentucky as a six-man. He's got the burst. He's got that speed. Only minus is just he's a little small. He's a little thin. He's very Morant-ish to me. I see a little Morant in him. If you combine Kyrie Irving and John Morant a little bit, you mix that up, I think you get a Rob Dillingham. And that assessment came from my dad, by the way. Shout out, dad. That didn't come from just me. But you guys get the idea. It's going to be really interesting to see what Atlanta does. Don't be surprised if we see a surprise because the odds are we're going to have a lot of surprises in today's draft. I mean, this is the first draft in a long time where there's not a guaranteed top two picks, right? Like, we could dead serious have Rob Dillingham go anywhere between 1 and 10. Like, the guy could be the first player off the board or he could be waiting all night to have his name called. I think that's fun. But as the guy who's a fan with a team of the number one overall pick, that's a slight bit little concerning, in my opinion. Now, I want to do something a little fun, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you're about to see a picture pull up on the screen. And as an Atlantean myself, I must say I'm rather a connoisseur in this kind of thing. It basically says, which meal is my number one overall pick? Well, ladies and gentlemen. Let me talk about the varsity first. Everybody in Atlanta knows that the varsity is criminally overrated. It is. It is. Don't get mad, all right? Don't get mad at the grand, the grandpas watching this video, the grandmas, the people who've lived in Atlanta. All their, do not get mad. It's overrated. It just is. It's no longer in its prime, right? It's like what LeBron's going to be at 60 years old playing basketball, essentially, right? Probably still pretty good. Probably going to be really good. Probably still be in shape. But it's just not the same. Not the same. Then going to Chick-fil-A. Everyone eats Chick-fil-A. I feel like everybody orders that chicken sandwich. I mean, there's a Chick-fil-A at my school at North Carolina A&T. 
There's a Chick-fil-A on every corner in almost every state in the United States, it seems like. Everyone eats Chick-fil-A. But they're not going to be my number one overall pick either. Because I, while I'm not a Chick-fil-A hater, I'm not the world's biggest fan of it at the same time. Chick-fil-A is not my favorite fast food restaurant. I think Chick-fil-A is really, really good. But people act like God came down and made that chicken. Guys, it's good. But it's not that good. And plus, these guys don't even open on Sundays. I can't watch them while, or I can't eat their food while watching football. And I don't like that. I don't. I don't. If I was the U.S. president, I would require these guys to be open on Sundays. Now, go ahead, open at 1 o'clock. I know a lot of you are going to say, well, they go to church. Name me a church service that lasts 24 hours. I'm waiting because you don't have one. These guys will be open at 1 p.m. on Sunday, right in time for me to catch a chicken sandwich while watching the Atlanta Falcons probably choke a 20-point lead. Now, going to American Deli. See, you guys probably don't think I know my staples, but trust and believe me, don't let my glasses, my shirt, and my nerdy look fool you. I know bangers when it comes to things like this. I know bangers. Your boy is a rather big back. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a heavy set man you're looking at here. Now, Grant's is a very handsome, elegant, heavyset man you're looking at here. But this is a heavyset man here. I'm a connoisseur for good food. A connoisseur. I know it all when it comes to this kind of thing. It's my AirPod just fell out. I know it all when it comes to this kind of thing. Which is how I know that American Deli is also slightly overrated. Slightly. Still really good. It can hit. And a lot of these locations are, a lot of these restaurants are location dependent. I've been to some crappy American delis, and I've been to some really darn good ones. But nonetheless, my number one overall pick is Waffle House. Waffle House is fantastic. It's the best restaurant to ever grace the planet. I will forever love Waffle House. Waffle House, you have my whole heart. You're my pookie bear, all of that stuff. I love it. I love it. Once again, if you want to know where good food is at, ask your guy. Ask this handsome, elegant, educated man you're looking at on the screen with his beautiful smile and pearly white teeth and nerdy-ish glasses. Ask me. Trust me. I know bangers. Now, going to my last topic for the day. This one kind of let me down. The Panthers winning the NHL title while Connor McDavid and Edmonton fall short of what would have been a historic 3-0 comeback. This disappointed me. Edmonton looked dominant in games four to six. I mean, Edmonton went from scoring six goals per game on average between games four and six on the best defense in hockey to only scoring a single goal in game seven. That just goes to show you how hard it is to complete a comeback. Better yet, Carter McDavid kind of disappeared in this last game. He wasn't as prevalent. The heroics that kept the Oilers in the series, I didn't see that in Game 7. And it was surprising because the guy had shown up all playoffs. Connor McDavid is arguably the best hockey player on the planet right now. Man. Man, that sucked. That sucked. That sucked. I wanted it for Connor McDavid bad, man. He's fantastic. He deserves a championship. I hope he gets it, bro. I hope he gets it before his career ends. I know he has some years left. I know he's the top dog in hockey right now. I hope he gets it, bro. I really do. Nonetheless, Connor McDavid was so good, he became just the second player in history to win the playoff MVP on the losing team in the Stanley Cup Finals. The man had 42 total points in these playoffs. That's good for fourth all-time when it comes to points in a playoff run. And mind you, the playoff MVP and the NBA Finals MVP, it's different, guys, all right? In hockey, the playoff MVP is across the entire playoffs. In basketball, the Finals MVP is just simply across the Finals. McDavid was fantastic. He was amazing. Florida Panthers were a better team. Either way, congratulations to them, actually, after winning a Stanley Cup. From 1996 to 2020, they qualified for the playoffs five times in total. Now, in these last five seasons, from 2020 to 2024, they have qualified multiple times and now have a Stanley Cup. They now have that ever-loving that ever-elusive title. I'm very excited for them. Congratulations, Florida Panthers. Even though you guys made a grown man cry the other night. Almost. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. Even though I wanted Connor McDavid, one of the greats, and probably the greatest player of my generation that I've watched in hockey, 
even though you guys took a championship away from him and robbed us of what would have been one of the greatest comebacks in sports history, I got to say, man, it was a great performance. They were a great defense, and they deserve this win. But nonetheless, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I wish you nothing but the best. Stay love, stay blessed. I'm going to end this video. Thank you for watching.